Hello Stormwater Designers and welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Hydrology Education videos. We've been going through TR55, been covering all the aspects of the model, running some sample projects. We're going to run another sample project here, example two. First you want to like and subscribe to the channel and then check out the rest of the playlist where we have all of our TR55 instructional videos for free. You can go look those up there. Anyways, let's get into example two. We're evaluating larger watersheds and user-defined storm data. So. For this one, the background is a small community in any county, any state has flooded multiple times in the last several years. The community wants to reduce flood damages and has requested assistance in evaluating peak discharges in the upper reaches of the watershed. So we see a schematic of that watershed below. And since there's no listing in the rainfall database for a location called any county, any state, the user must input some custom storm data for this job. So we can see we have the upper main creek sub area drains here, the county road branch sub area, all going to the middle main creek sub area from the lower west, upper west, and lower east, finally to the lower main creek sub area at the main stem to reach. And then this is the watershed data for the land use. So we can see uh, the various uh, sea soil groups and the acres for them. So they give us a land use details report here. Where do the land use details data come from? The land use data for the watershed may be derived using GIS. If GIS coverages exist for the watershed area developed from current aerial photo photographs or be determined from a watershed site visit, the hydrologic soil group data may be obtained from the current soil survey for the county or countries in which the watershed is located. And here's some time of concentration details for all the creeks, its length, slopes, the surface description, right? So we can see a full report here. Then where did that time of concentration detail come from? Well, it, it should be carefully estimated from each sub area, length and slope for each individual flow type, the sheet, shallow, con shallow concentrate, and open channel, can be obtained from the USGS to uh, topographical maps, aerial photographs, and field observations. The flow velocity must be determined for open channel flows. Either take bank full velocity information from a previously developed water surface profile model, or Entering the Manny's N value, use survey data to develop cross sectional flow area, water perimeter, and slope for the stream length in question. Then, this is the reach data provided for each of the reaches, their lengths, Manning ends, and slopes. It says the reach data must be derived for each stream segment that receives water from an upstream sub area or another reach. The cur rating curves are developed from the reaches that describe the flow characteristics of the reaches. Then, for the rainfall data, the user must enter the any state and any county in the state uh, entry boxes in the main window or the main window will not match the second main window on the next page. So rainfall data for the watershed in any county, any state is for the 24-hour precipitation amount, we got 3, 3.5, 4.5, 5.1, 5.8, 6.5, and 7.2 for the 1 through 100 year flow events. So step one, we are going to select globe data, global data from TR55 main window. Using global data, select storm data here. So Let's make sure we get this correct. So global data, storm data, and we are going to, let me scroll here real quick so I can see a little better what's going on. So when the storm data window opens, enter the rainfall amount by return frequency for the desired storms and select appropriate rain, rainfall distribution from the drop, drop down list. So we can see that down here. I'm going to do two, we're going to do 3.5. Remember, we went over these values here 4.5, 5.1. All right, it seems to be upset with this order. So let me start from maybe, okay, 5.1, 5.8. Keep going, 6.5, 7.2. And then three for the one year return period. Okay, and it says the distribution is type two. So we're gonna put that in there. And then I'm going to click accept. So it says for this example problem, the storm data windows appears as follows. Note since any county, any state is not listed and the user entered those names in the window TR55 menu, forcing the switch to region locale. The NRCS storm data button on the storm data window is disabled. Okay, so we're going to click accept right there. I'm going to scroll down to, I wonder if I have to, do I have to custom enter this? I'm 
Okay, any state and any county. Okay, that's what I'm going with there. Now I need to make sure that the storm data remains the same. Yes, it does. Okay, except this is the test project here and example two. Okay, so we've got that wrapped up there. Now, if we go to upon completion of the data entry, the Windows TR55 main window should appear as follows. So we, now we have to enter in all this sub area data here. So we've got the upper main. It looks like we've got the country road or county road, I should say. I think it's important to keep in mind that the data entry for your project uh, is incredibly important. It's very important that you get that accurately here and tends to be the most laborious part of your project, but is still quite important. So I'm going to go ahead and enter in the rest of these details here. This will take me a bit of time and then we will zip ahead to the results. So I will see you guys there. So I entered in all that land use data and if we entered in all the reach data as we saw here, you can see that the two, five, ten through through 100 year storm events were analyzed and peak discharges obtained for each sub area and reach the hydrograph peak slash peak timetable consists contains a list of peaking discharges for each of the sub area and reaches. So we can see the peaks for all those here in the hydrograph that's in the file display over there. You can view that information. So it says to evaluate the output results and make a judgment. As for whether results are reasonable, it is beneficial to understand how Windows TR55 processes the data. So it says here, for, for this example, the peaks listed for main stem 2 reach become somewhat more complicated because two tributaries enter the system. However, applying the concepts of adding the hydrographs and developing peaks, as explained in the previous paragraph, it should be obvious to the user that the peak discharge at the upper end of the main stem 2 reach represents the combination of the following. A resultant hydrograph obtained from the runoff produced by the upper main and county branch sub areas routed through main stem one. The runoff hydrograph produced by middle main sub area. Runoff hydrograph produced by upper west, lower west, upper east, and lower east. So from the watershed peak table, the peak at the point from the five year storm event is about 1500 cubic feet per second. Notice that the downstream end of this reach, the peak is reduced from 1518 CFS. The 1,518 cubic feet per second represents the peak of the hydrograft as it is routed downstream through main, ste main stem to reach. The only thing left at this point is to add the runoff produced by the lower main sub area. The peak hydrograft from the lower main sub area produces a peak discharge at 300 CFS. And when these final two hydrographs are added, the resultant peak at the watershed outlet is 1,808 CFS. So you can see the peak timetable here for all the sub areas and reaches. And then you can add those together to determine the peak to help with your model and mitigation. So that's a run through of example two. If you have any questions, leave it in a comment down below. This is from the help file manual for TR55, so you can run through it yourself. Thank you so much for watching. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time.